If you spend any time around people interested in body hacking, you'll have heard about nootropics. Nootropics are a class of drugs that are supposedly able to boost your cognition or brain function in some way, and are sold to aid with studying, learning, memory, and more. While there are legitimately some very interesting nootropics that have actual benefit, most don't actually really do anything. And the ones that do are usually marketed as if they're the pill from Limitless that makes you a genius. So let me burst your bubble right off the bat. NZT isn't real and nothing can do what it can do. As with everything in biology, the effect is usually very subtle, but can still make a big difference in the long run. By far, the king of nootropics has to be cerebrolysin. Not only is it one of the most potent, it's also one of the most well-studied and has the most beneficial effects. It's approved in many European and Asian countries, and doctors use it for treating a variety of ailments from stroke to dementia. And yet, not that many people know about it, and only a few that do are willing to try it. So, what is cerebrolysin? Where did it come from, and how do you use it? Cerebrolysin was discovered back in 1949 by Australian neuroscientist Gerhard Harrer. A quick caveat, and for the sake of disclosure because I know I'll get comments about it, yes, Harrer was a Nazi. Not even like rocket scientist the US took in after the war. The guy joined the SS before it was legal. So for that, screw this guy and I hope he rots someplace awful. However, his work on Cerebrolysin was actually quite good and took place long after the war. In most of the literature, you'll see cerebrolysin referred to as brain hydrolysate, but for me, that wasn't good enough. I wanted to know how you actually make the stuff. After finding the original paper, which was in German, and the original patent, which was also in German, and then finally a rough translation, I was able to piece together what this stuff is. To make cerebrolysin, you first harvest brain tissue from animals that are free of prion diseases. Specifically, you want the cortex of the brain. Originally, cows were used for this, but at some point they seem to have switched to pigs. An interesting thing to note, then, is that the source species doesn't seem to matter. After harvesting the tissue and processing it in essentially a blender, it's then subject to enzymatic digestion in what the patent calls serine protease. Serine proteases are enzymes that break down proteins, typically by cleaving proteins at lysine and arginine amino acids in their primary structure. A protein's primary structure is simply the sequence of amino acids that make it up before it gets folded. The most common is called trypsin, and it's used all throughout biology. Based on when the patent was first published, I'd be willing to bet that trypsin is the enzyme that Dr. Harrer used for this process, but it doesn't say more, so I'm not actually sure. After the enzymatic step, everything is heated to 95 degrees Celsius, which heat inactivates any proteases and prevents things from being broken down further. Then, alcohol is added to make the proteins precipitate out of the solution. The precipitate is then redissolved in distilled water, and then filtered through smaller and smaller filters until you get to one that only allows molecules less than 10 kilodaltons in size to pass through. Everything below 10 kilodaltons is saved and packaged into the final recipe that becomes a vial of cerebrolysin. They also add some preservative and dissolve it all in sterile saline to a final concentration of 120 milligrams per milliliter. One of the biggest things that makes cerebrolysin stand out from other nootropics and brain drugs is that it's been extensively studied. While the trials for stroke have come back with mixed results, those individuals with the most severe cases seem to benefit the most. For things like dementia in large meta-analysis, it's been shown that there is real benefit, and that cerebrolysin can actually help to degrade plaques and tangles that start to form in the brain. Through all the trials and literature, the one thing that remains consistent is that treatment with cerebrolysin induces regeneration and new growth of neurons. To that end, it's been used outside of brain disorders and has instead been used for peripheral nervous system issues like damaged spinal cords and the regrowth of nerves in places that have been injured. Strangest of all, it can actually protect against liver damage from toxic compounds like lipopolysaccharides in some cases. There's even mounting evidence that it can help with depression, memory, and brain damage from drug abuse. So with such a long list of potential uses, why isn't everyone using this? Well, first off, it's not approved for use in the US. Why, I'll never know. As I mentioned earlier, it's used extensively in Europe and Asia. But the biggest reason by far that it's not more popular is that it can't be ingested. It has to be injected either intramuscularly or intravenously depending on the application. Cerebrolysin comes in a few doses, 2 mil, 5 mil, 10 mil, and 20 mil per day. For anything less than severe brain damage, I would say that 5 mil doses are sufficient, but up to 10 is possible. Before we get into how to use cerebrolysin, why is it so special? Why not just use things like nerve growth factor or brain-derived neurotrophic factor cocktails? The answer is that the full proteins won't pass through the blood-brain barrier, and so the only way to get them to have an effect is a rather invasive brain injection. Cerebrolysin, on the other hand, somehow induces those proteins to start being produced in the brain so that they can work and have beneficial effects even if it's administered intramuscularly. 
Okay, so let's say you go out, buy 10 days worth of 5 mil cerebralizin. How do you actually use it? Well, first you'll need some sterile syringes, some 23 gauge 3 quarter inch or 1 inch needles, and some alcohol pads. First, open the syringe, careful not to touch the end where the needle gets attached. Then open the needle package at one end and carefully screw it onto the syringe. So long as it's in the sheath until you use it, it'll stay sterile. Cerebralycin comes in these little ampules, so you'll need to carefully break them open. There's a dot on one side, which is where you put your thumb and then apply pressure. The top should just pop right off. If you're worried about glass fragments, you can actually get needles with built-in filters, but they're a pain, so I don't usually bother. With the ampule open, you can remove the needle from the sheath and carefully suck up all the liquid, being careful not to pull air and make a bunch of tiny bubbles. It's better to leave a drop or two behind than get a bunch of air. Even in the best cases, there'll be a little bit of air in the syringe when this is done. Tip the syringe up and flick or tap the side to loosen any bubbles so they all float to the top. When they're at the top, place the cap back on and depress the plunger slightly. This will make some liquid squirt out, but the air should follow behind. This is what doctors are doing whenever you see them do this in movies and TV shows. They're not just checking to see if the syringe works. With all the air out, you can actually go ahead with the injection. You replace the cap because this isn't TV and you don't want to spray brain drugs everywhere. For intramuscular injections, there's three sites that you can use. Your deltoid, or shoulder, the vastus lateralis, or your thigh, and your butt. Personally, I prefer the deltoid because it's easy and relatively painless, so that's what I'll demonstrate. Before the injection, it's important to clean the site with alcohol. Start the swab from the point where you're going to do the injection and move it outwards in a spiral motion. When that's dry, you can go ahead with the injection. The spot you're aiming for can be found with this helpful diagram. Really, you're going for the meaty part of your deltoid, not too close to the bone. You may see people in videos inserting the needle slowly, but that's dumb, and honestly just hurts more. If you've ever had your vaccines, you'll know that no doctor does that. Just pick the spot you're going for and then commit. In one solid motion, insert the needle. Then you can start the injection. The deltoid can only hold 2.5 milliliters of liquid at the most, so if you're using 5 mil vials, you'll need to do this in both arms. Slowly depress the plunger, injecting 2.5 milliliters over about 10 seconds. Don't go too fast, but don't take forever either. When all is done, the site may leak a bit of fluid or bleed a little bit. A piece of tissue, a cotton ball, or some sterile gauze should be applied for a moment to collect any fluid and until it stops bleeding. And that's all there is to it. Repeat this once a day for the entire 10-day course of treatment. This should go without saying, but of course, dispose of your needles responsibly. If you're feeling adverse effects, it's probably best to just stop the treatment. Also, if you're on other drugs like antidepressants, do this at your own risk. For me, it felt like having my whole brain reset. Even my tolerance to my antidepressants got all funky, and it felt like ba being back on them for the very first week I was on them, which was really weird. But beyond that, I felt amazing after and during. Sure, it could well be placebo, but my work habits were improved, I found myself working more hours without getting tired, and generally feeling really good. Remembering stuff was also easier. I hope that, if nothing else, this video was informative. Just like the magnet implants, there was a lot of bad or confusing information about cerebralycin, so I thought it warranted a video. Maybe it's given you some ideas for family members in need, and it may be well worth discussing with a doctor. But as always, be sure to handle this responsibly and take the appropriate precautions if you intend to attempt anything you've seen in this video. And with that, I'll wrap up this video. I hope you've enjoyed, and if you have, it would be awesome if you'd subscribe and click the bell icon to get notifications when I post new videos. As always, thanks to my awesome patrons who helped to make this show possible. If you'd like to support the show, check out my store where you can find some awesome merch, or consider becoming a patron. That's all for now, and I'll see you next time.